Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at how to factor completely using polynomial division and grouping. So we have a request from the user Aiden Bolts and it's the problem factor x to the fourth minus x to the third minus x squared minus x minus two completely and here are the steps. Now I know we're looking for a root and this is an expression. Pretend this is a function for a moment. If we test out a few basic values like negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, or 2, this should allow us to identify what would be a root of this if it were a function. If we try out 0, 0 is not a root because the intercept would be negative 2. If we try out 1, we would wind up with something like this that does not equal 0, so 1 is out. When we try out negative 1 though, we plug in, and parentheses are important when you're plugging in a negative. So we plug in negative 1 into the expression here, and check to see if it equals 0. Well, the first part's going to give us 1. Minus negative 1 changes to plus 1. Minus 1, plus 1, minus 2. 1 minus 1 cancels. 1 plus 1 will give you 2 minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so this tells us if this were a function, negative 1 is a root. And what this tells us, if negative 1 is a root, then x plus 1 is a factor. And this is a huge step, because once we identify a factor, we could move to step 2, polynomial division. And just know, how do we know that we can move from here to here? Well, if we have something like x plus 1 equals 0, when we solve it, it gives us x equals negative 1. Okay, so we're kind of just like moving backwards here and just flipping the sign. So for the next part, we're going to divide by x plus 1. And this is dividing into the entire polynomial. x to the fourth minus x to the third minus x squared minus x minus 2. So we look at the leading terms, x and x to the fourth. x goes into x to the fourth x to the third times. Okay, then we distribute. We have x to the third times x is x to the fourth x to the third times 1 is x to the third. And now we subtract this line from the previous. x to the fourth minus x to the fourth cancels. And then negative x to the third minus x to the third is negative 2x to the third. Carry down the next term. And we repeat this process until there's nothing left. So x goes into negative 2x to the third. It goes in minus 2x squared times. And now we distribute minus 2x to the third, and we have minus 2x squared. So we subtract this line from the previous, and the first two terms will cancel. Negative x squared minus negative 2x squared is positive x squared. Carry down the minus x. x goes into x squared x times. So we have plus x. We distribute. We'll get x squared plus x. Subtract, the first two go away, minus x, minus x will give us negative 2x. And if we did this correctly, we'll know at this step. x goes into negative 2x, minus 2 times. Distribute, we'll have negative 2x, and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And notice they match, which is a good sign, and these will cancel out completely. So what this allows us to say for the last stage of this problem is that x to the fourth, minus x to the third, minus x squared minus x minus 2 equals, and we can write this in factored form now. This is x plus 1 times, and we have x to the third minus 2x squared plus x minus 2. If we stop here, this is incorrect. We have to factor this completely. So what we need to do is this last polynomial here, the second part, we're going, to uh, we're going to find the greatest common factor of the first two terms and the last two terms. And we're going to factor it out, and we're going to finish this by grouping. So for this last part here, we have equals x plus 1. We'll put brackets because we're going to have many more parentheses here. And we have x squared for the first two terms. That's our GCF, x squared. And then we have x minus 2 left. And then the greatest common factor of x and negative 2 is 1. So we have 1 times x minus 2. And now to close this out completely, we have x plus 1 
times, and the matching factor here is x minus 2. So we're going to factor out x minus 2, and we're left with x squared plus 1, which is our final answer. The only way you would get a different answer here, do not fall trapped to trying to factor x squared plus 1. The roots of this factor, if we were finding roots, are imaginary. So this is where we stop. But if we were looking for imaginary or complex factors, then our answer would be x plus 1 times x minus 2. And then this would break down to x plus i, x minus i. Okay. But usually you'll stop at this line here. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on factoring with polynomial division and grouping. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.